Well, there are some people who live for adventure, and then for others, that isn't enough. Eric Alexander learned that lesson climbing the highest mountain in the world. Watch this. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Eric Alexander. Welcome. It is great to have you with us. Thank you very much. You know, I'm, I read your book last night. I was up till 2 in the morning reading this. <laughs> and I'm gasping as I'm reading some of this. Everest isn't just the highest mountain in the world. I mean, it's the most dangerous. I mean, people, most people have issues either going up or coming down. What made you want to do this? Well, it had been a dream of mine ever since I was a kid. My dad came home with these big pictures one day and it said, prepare, ascend, and triumph. And it was of these mountain climbers just facing the obstacles. And I'd always kind of daydream about getting up into the high peaks. And growing up in the mountains, just being around them, it was something that I had always aspired to, but really never dared to really truly embrace and dream about. And dared is the right word to use because a year before, as you were sort of preparing for this, you were in the Himalayas, was it? And That's you, right. you took a 150 foot fall that almost cost you your life. Tell us about that. Yeah, I was climbing with my blind friend, Eric Weinmayer, and we were doing a training climb for Everest the next year. And I had spent a week up at 20,000 feet with him in a tent, and the rest of the team had gone to base camp to get more supplies. And well, after this week, we tried for the summit, but we didn't make it. And so we were pretty much beat up and tired, and it was on the way down. I was exhausted carrying a heavy pack. I stepped on a loose rock, which was on the edge of a 600-foot cliff. That rock turned over on me. I fell on it, and instead of going over with the rock in my arms, I let go of it. And I fell 150 feet. It wow. wasn't a pure free fall. I had the good fortune of hitting some rocks on the way down <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and bouncing my way down. But really, 150 feet down, it was as though I landed right in the hand of God. And he said, yeah. you know, not today. And it was really miraculous that I didn't break any bones. Had I caught my foot or something, if something had happened and caused me to flip over, I would have certainly fell 600 feet and died. So Now, Eric, if I had been crazy enough to do that the first time in that prep trip and then had fallen 150 feet and you had some issues that lasted for almost a year after that physically. I did. After that climb, I got high altitude pulmonary edema and that's when your lungs start to fill up with fluid. And this happened because my body went into shock and my body was compensating in a way that could kill me. And so the only way to fix that is to get down and descend quickly. But uh, I was close to death with that pulmonary edema. And then afterwards, when I finally did get home, I had a helicopter rescue and all this other stuff that went on. And pneumonia that. that followed I all of that, that went on and on. And uh, were you it not did. afraid then to go back again? Well, it really interfered with my training. And I was really <laughs> struggling with fear and doubt and going back to Everest. And I spent a lot of time with my, a good friend of mine whose name was Joseph. And he was a prayer partner of mine and a climbing partner. And then I lost him. He died in a snowboarding accident two months before I was to go back to Everest. And it seemed like everything was kind of coming against me to do this climb. And so really, I, I put it in front of the Lord. And I thought, I'm going to pray about this. And I'm going to pray that he closes all these doors yeah, so I don't God. have to deal with it. <laughs> but really, instead, what happened was as I prayed, these doors opened. So, yeah. And he said... I'm not going to put you on the summit of Everest. That's not my goal mm -hmm. for you. My goal for you is for you to trust me yeah. and to take a step of faith. And you talk about that in the book, that the goal wasn't the, the summit. The goal was the trust factor on the journey. Yeah. You kind of mentioned this a little in passing a few moments ago, but you climbed with and assisted a blind climber, which is almost beyond comprehension. I, what was that like? Well, it's funny because people think, well, he must have been able to see a little bit to get yeah. to the summit of Everest, but no, he was completely blind. In fact, we had three blind trekkers, or two blind trekkers going with us. They had a hard time with the trail, but Eric is such a tremendous That's athlete, a he was booking it down the trail, and people thought they were going to catch us in this hoax. And so one night we sat down and said, Eric, you got to tell the, you know, the Sherpas who are here to help us get to the summit, you got to tell your story and tell them how you went blind. Well, instead, he took out his prosthetic eyes 
and showed them. <laughs> yeah, that would do it. That'd yeah. be a visual. After that, the Sherpa said, please do not do that again. <laughs> and uh, we're a cohesive team on our way, you know. <laughs> Unbelievable. One of the things that, that you show a picture of in the book is something you call the Jesus Ladder. Well, that became the name of it as you were climbing. But tell people about that. I had no idea that a risk like that occurred. Yeah, um, yeah, you can see it here, this picture, it's it's in my book, and uh, this is m one of my teammates crossing a ladder over one of the crevasses in the Kumbu Icefall, which is the kind of the doorway to Everest, and it, we called it the Jesus Ladder because it was the first word out of his mouth when he stepped on it. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, as his legs were shaking, he said, you know, if you don't believe, you're going to start as soon as you step wow. on this thing. And, yeah, the ice fall is a scary place, and climbing with someone who's blind, it takes longer. And I so you're cannot imagine. really in that th threatening area for a much longer period of time. So that was the doorway to get to the summit. And then you're there after what must have seemed like impossible odds. This isn't something that you just start one day and it happens in a, in a few days. I mean, you have to stop at each camp level and let your body adapt to the altitude, when you finally get to the summit, you are literally standing on top of the world. What is that like? Yeah, it, it's amazing, but you know, really it's not about the view. It, it's about the accomplishment yeah. and having achieved it with a team, with friends. And that's what I remember more than anything. I remember the tears streaming down my cheeks because people told us it was gonna be impossible. They yeah. told him he was gonna die, that he was gonna take me with them. And it, it, you don't just go there and then in two days later you're on top. It took right. two and a half months. And wow. so it's really a, a, an effort and perseverance. Yeah. And that's what I love to share with people as I travel around and I get to speak and I, I, I share with audiences is that we, we need to persevere. You know, there's yeah. gonna be obstacles yes. and trials yeah. at every step along the way. Well, and even when you get to the summit, you have to come down. That's I mean, right. that's the, I, I thought about that as I was reading it. I thought, good grief, after you finally make this unbelievable accomplishment, now you have to start the trek down, and a lot of people lose their lives on the trek down. More people die on the way down than they do reaching the summit. And wow. for every 10 people that have made the summit, one has died. And so the odds really aren't in your favor. Yeah. And uh, it was my job, as, as I saw it, to take Eric from the summit back to Camp 4. And so I had him behind me the whole way talking to him. I had to take my oxygen off. I ran out of oxygen at one time on the way down. And, so uh, just being there beside him and leading him all the way down. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's scary. You've, you've really got to stay focused on every step. The challenges along the way are, are more than most of us would, would recognize or understand not having done something like this. But I love the fact that in your book, The Summit, Faith Beyond Everest's Death Zone, you, at the end of each chapter, you give us a little tidbit to walk away with, like you talked about perseverance and the need to hang on, but you apply it to all of our lives, and I think that's such an important thing. This book is about lots more than climbing Mount Everest, and I just really want to encourage you to get a hold of it. I think you would find it as astonishing as I did. If you'd like to hear more about the story, the book is called The Summit, and you can find it in bookstores around the country. Uh, where good books are sold. Eric Alexander, thank you. What an amazing story, and congratulations on an amazing accomplishment. All right, well, thank you very <laughs> Quite much. Quite the guy. It's a pleasure yes. to be here with you.